it's the best for a lot of reasons, but it's it's fast, it's efficient. For a tournament fishing boat, I think well, this size boat is, is spot on. This thing's aesthetically about as good as a boat can look in my eyes. My name's Rod Finlay. Uh, I run a, a sport fishing business called XL Sport Fishing where I get to look after this beautiful Viking Billfish 46. Uh, yeah, well, so the first boat was my 228 Grady White, which I bought off Short Marine. Uh, then the, uh, the second was the predecessor to this, Callister, uh, which was the Grady 370 with the, the triple outboards, the triple four two fives and the tower. And this is that owner's latest boat. It's not a super deep V hull. These are a modified V, so they're flatter at the back and sharper up forward. Uh, it's 46 feet, 46 and a half feet overall length, 15 feet beam, holds two and a half, 2,600 litres of diesel, about 450 litres of water, but we also have a diesel, so we can make as much water as we like. Um, weighs about 17, 18 tonne wet. Oh, th this is a phenomenal boat to drive for, for a lot of reasons. The, the whole shot in this is probably not as fast as my family's boat, Murray Finn, but once it gets going, how slow it makes fast feel. You're cruising around at 30 knots, yet you feel like you're doing low 20s. Boat's really quiet, not much noise, so it's a, um, it's a beautiful thing to drive to see, and it steers like a go-kart. I've driven 20-foot boats that don't manoeuvre at sea as well as this does. Uh, we have a pair of I6 Mans at 850 horsepower aside. Clean engine rooms mean that whenever you see a spill, a leak, anything, you know exactly where it's orientated from. It's the way it should be, everything in its place. Starting up forward, the, um, the owner and I like the look of that West Coast style bow pulpit. And you've got your anchor recessed down, to give you a nice clean footing. So when you're up the front, you can throw poppers or you, you can sight fish and sight cast off the bow, which is a big thing in America, not so much here. Moving back through the boat, the cabin space is set up well for the owner who likes to treat it like a one bedroom apartment when it's not fishing. So it's got you know, a, a beautiful couch down there, a nice galley, double cabin, head and shower in the one side. And then upstairs is kept very plain and simple. So all your, all your horrible, smelly, dirty fishermen don't get to go down into the, the flash accommodation. You can lock that door or keep it shut and, and keep the, the nice, easy to clean, low maintenance area available to everyone during the day. The boat's got just about every option you could tick from to Sea Keeper to the Palm Beach Tower. This boat is extensively fitted with Dometic gear, uh, rolling from the air conditioning systems, the ice maker, the toilets, and right up to the steering system, the Optimus steering system. You know, the advantage of going from Dometic steering from hydraulic is almost as big a leap as what you've got going from Dometic steering, from a cable steering to hydraulic, Dometic is the next level above with the way it steers digitally. Um, it's exceptionally good uh, how precise it is and turning, having your rate of turn turned right down means a boat drives like a sports car, three turns lock to lock. It's, um, it's effortless steering and it's very precise. So what we have here is the power control module for the Optima steering box. Uh, this module runs off both battery supplies, so it'll choose the most dominant power supply, so you have redundancy there. Uh, also, we have our two uh, power steering units. So we've got one for each rudder, but these are also will slave independently, so one can control both if required. Um, in the event of emergency, we also have these um, hydraulic relief valve so we can remove the hydraulic pressure, straighten the rudders and then close them in the event of an emergency if we've got a loss of power or a power module control failure. The steering system is also individually rammed, one ram for each rudder which means they can control how much the rudders tow in and tow out. Uh, that affects obviously slip speed and how fast you can travel. Uh, if you've got your rudders towed in correctly to your wake, you, you'll go faster. So it makes the boat more efficient. It also means in a scenario where you're turning, the internal rudder will turn less than the external runner, much like, much like a differential in a car, um, which is, makes the boat steer even better than if it was just steering with a straight rudder set. 
This here is our Eskimo ice chipping machine. What you got here is the Eskimo ice panel control. This pumps ice directly into our fish tub outside. So it uses fresh water, fresh water pump runs through the condenser, dumps us some ice. We make about 200 kilos of ice a day if we need to. So we can half fill that tub in the space of about four hours, which means uh, we're always got cold fish, cold beer. It's, it's at the press of a button. So we've got a pair of NSS Evo 316s, coupled to an S5100. We've got a second transducer coming shortly, which is an ultra wide beam, an R409. Um, and we also have a B275 LHW. Well, I did all the full JL audio fit out in this boat. A pair of eight inches, a pair of eight B8s, and a bunch of six B6s all around. So it's, um, you certainly know it when it's cranked up. Well, in Australia, you call it a tuna tower but it's predominantly for us if we go up around the Great Barrier Reef to, to spot the, the, uh, the coral and stuff when you're navigating behind the reef during the afternoon when you're coming into anchor. The tower gives you a great view and when you're out tuna fishing, when you've got no clears around you, you've got a great prospect, you can see a lot further. That extra height with your gyro stabilised binoculars means you can see uh, another couple of miles even further for birds. So this boat's fitted with a Release Marine helm chair and a Release Marine game chair. Uh, both of them are the only real pieces of teak on the exterior of the boat. We imported our own slimies into Queensland when we took this to the Gold Coast from Port Stephens. And after five days of fishing, the slimies were as good as new. We let them go in the marina and they swam off happy as day. One of the huge benefits of this model of boat is it's got um, both, both engine hatches in the cabin that run up on hydraulic screw jacks so you can lift both sides of the engine room up and get pretty much world-class engine room access to the point where you could, you know, you could have a motor out of this boat if you really wanted to without any cosmetic work within about three or four hours if you really tried. Words can't describe how well it runs. It's a um, comparative to most of the other boats I've travelled in, which are deep V. This, this thing runs as good as most deep V boats, but it's got all the stability of a, of a punt. It's crazy. When you're out at sea fishing in it, with the sea keeper on it to get this real slow motion. It feels almost like a big manly ferry. I'm on my feet a lot the way we, with the style of fishing we do, and I get off this and I, I don't feel like I've spent a day on the ocean. It's incredible for that aspect. If I could change anything on it, I'd probably lift the gunnel height about 150 mil all the way around. Um, it currently sits at about 650 to, depending on where you're standing in the cockpit in the fall, it's about, say, 650 to 700 mil deep. and, and most Australian boats I'd prefer to be sort of 800 to 850 mil deep. But that also would take away with how sleek and beautiful it looks. It, if you had to add that height to it, you'd have to add it all the way around. The biggest benefit of this boat I see is it's, it sounds funny to say a boat with two 13 litre diesels at 1700 horsepower combines efficient, but this boat is extremely efficient. It's an average day marlin fishing out of Port Stephens or Sydney somewhere around four to 500 litres, depending on how far we run, but we're cruising everywhere at 30 knots. So we're cruising at 30 knots, burning 180 litres an hour combined. So I think it stacks up against a trailer boat scenario where if you've got four guys in a trailer boat using 200 litres of fuel a day and you've got eight guys on this using 500 litres a day, the fuel burn is comparable to both. The size of the motors and the gearboxes and the props, just it makes everything feel very, even though you're traveling very fast, it makes everything feel very slow. We've had a ridiculous run of luck in this boat. Um, ever since we started fishing, the first day we fished it, we, I think we caught two or three marlin and that continued on that run. I thought it was gonna finish on the Gold Coast over winter, but we managed to catch a marlin every day we tried. And even though this last trip we did wasn't really targeting marlin, I had, a, I had that in mind. I went to where I thought the warmest water was. <laughs> and boats get to suit anyone that wants the best day game fishing boat you can get. Um, it's the best for a lot of reasons, but it's, it's fast, it's efficient. It's got a huge amount of space and seating, so we take eight or nine people, they disappear. You, you don't feel like there's eight or nine people on board. At the end of the day, it's the quickest thing to wash and clean up. For a tournament fishing boat, I think 46 feet, well, this size boat is, is spot on you know, for manoeuvrability, for its efficiency. 
um, and, and you can take sort of eight or nine people and, and fish effectively.